Greetings and salutations. I'm Ian, and this is my own game, A Door to the Mist, or rather a demo thereof. It is, of course, very much a work in progress, so things may change from what you're about to see here, and indeed I will likely mention some of the things that I intend to change, or have already changed, as we go. So, with that, let us begin. I don't think we need the tutorial. I think I know how to play this game. I hope I know how to play this game. I should know how to play this game. The Arcanieri, the Blue Mists, the World Beyond, and many other names besides. It's the place magic comes from, a place of thick blue mist, blazing stars, and impossible terrain. What would it be like to adventure there? What would I see, find, see, and hear? For as long as I can remember, I've yearned to explore its depths. But it's known that only magic users can enter, and taking up magic requires a heavy sacrifice. More, once you've chosen a path in life, only the sacrifice of that path will do. Going back on it means death. Adventuring is my path. It burned in my blood the day I was born. It's the very reason I want to enter the mists. I cannot give up on the stream. I cannot give up on finding a way into the mists. It's low pay for you and nothing exciting, just a simple fetch job. I don't care, I'll take it. It really was a simple job. Fetch an object, possibly magical, from an old repository in a forest. Maybe guarded. Nothing I couldn't do quickly and easily. But it was posted by a spell worker, and for a chance to meet with one, how could I not take it? With that, our journey begins. This is the prologue, the tutorial level, essentially. Um, oops. This uh, initial bit of traversal has actually given me some trouble. Not the bit that I was just struggling with, I was distracted there, but more these angled stones. This bit in particular gets awkward. Anyway, that's hopefully improved already. Now, theoretically, we're supposed to drop that uh, rock in there to sound just how far it is, but meh. Ah. Right. We have a puzzle here with various murals that give us hints, but uh, the solution is actually quite simple. Push one with our sword, push the other with our hand, and down we go. Now, what we want is uh, over there, if I recall correctly. And if we go for it, this fellow wakes up. Now, we can outrun him. Sort of. We can keep ahead of him. But that lift is going to go up quite slowly once we're done, so we're going to have to face him anyway. So, let's go for it. Now, this guy's a pretty easy opponent. Oops. Ah, that's me being... Overconfident, I fear. Ah. And I'm paying for it. Blech. Oh well. There we go, that's more like it. He's pretty slow, pretty sil stupid, and pretty easy to fight once you know what you're doing. And if you're not getting distracted and overconfident. And one more hit should. Do it. Ah, if I can actually get a hit in. Ah, almost tried to block that. That would not have been a good thing. Just let my stamina recover more fully. There we go. And he's down. Uh, this, by the way, will not be a 100% runner I intend. I'll leave, uh, leave it to you to discover everything. But I will pick up a few of my favourites, like this bowl. I happen to be quite fond of this bowl. 
Look, it's a nice bowl. And up we go again. Still like that effect. Uh, which way, which way, which way? Ah, this way. And down we go. And we are pretty much done. As our protagonist said, a quick and easy job. A meeting with a spell worker, a chance to ask my question. The answer was the same, of course, as it always was. But I had to try, to keep trying. How could I not? A door that leads right into the mist world in a city under the ground called Katol. Where is it? I don't know. Where did you hear it? At the Archive of Telly. I got a book for them. The Archive supports itself by requiring payment for its services. I can't afford to pay their price in coin, but they always need the services of someone like me to fetch books from dangerous places. This time it's a barrow, recently unearthed by their explorers, said to entomb both knowledge and bones. Do this, and I have access to their knowledge, their story of Catal. It might be just a story, or it's meaning lost to time. Even if it is, it should be an adventure to seek it out. And if it's not... Ah, chapter one. And arguably the true first step of the story. Uh, what will I show you and what won't I? We can go straight into the barrow, of course. But these doors are all locked. I have these stone plates. As we see there, if we uh, touch them, they leave us a trace of mist. I have a keyhole, but we don't have any keys. So, we need to do a bit of exploring. Start by picking up that book, which updates our lexicon, for one of the minigame puzzles. And we want to collect you. And we want to explore down here. Specifically, we want this ceramic piece and the cylindrical key. We're not quite ready yet, though. We don't know what to put onto that stone plate, the one that uh, leaves a trace of mist. For that, we're going to want to explore up here. And for that, we have a bit of traversal to do. Ah, there we go. This tree can actually be a little tricky at times, but we're up. And one more jump, and another, and we find this little box. Another key, and a stack of papers. Now, this is a translation puzzle. What we have here, here is uh, words in a language that we know word roots for, bits and pieces of words. For example, we know that Ul means emotion, and we have to figure out what these uh, words mean based on these word roots that we know. However, complicating things are overlapping word roots like enet and net, and grammatical elements. For example, this first word, ikul, starts with iku to be, and has ol, which is a gra grammatical element. Specifically, um, I'll give you a hint, it's a plural. So, let's see, uh, nij, enet, cool enet, rec. To be, pa to be plural, paper plural, enet, truth or facts, self mark symbol. These being the pages of my journal. These being the pages of my journal. It's a journal. There's a lot here, and I don't understand all of the words, but they give the na family name Ekio, and there's a symbol on the back of the pages. As you can see, we have that symbol in our inventory now. Ow. Ah. Right, now we are ready to take a look at those doors again. I'll confess I do like some of these views still. Right, 
Now, we have a couple of doors here, each with names. This one reads Eket, this one reads Telheko, and this one reads Ekiol. Ah, and that's the one that we just got a symbol for. We could then draw that on the plate. And one of these keys, I believe it's this one, fits the hole. And we can open it up. Then meet this fellow. He's, um, he's not very lively. He doesn't talk much. Um, but he's perfectly accommodating. What we're actually for is that piece of paper. That's enough, I think. I should be able to get at the whole symbol if I just arrange these right. If I just arrange these right, that's probably a better reading. Anyway, pieces of a symbol. Do that. We hit another mini game. In this one, we have these pieces, and we have to arrange them to make a symbol. And we have a couple of uh, hints here. You can see there are some lines here and here, and it all has to fit, come together. So, what it amounts to is that and that. That's it, a family symbol like the other one. This one being the Eket family symbol. Uh, that being that one. So we draw that. We use that key. And we're through. This tomb doesn't have an occupant. In fact, it's been converted into an entryway. Whoops. Oh, here's a bit of a lo loading stutter there, I fear. And a bit of a stutter in my voice, too, apparently. So this isn't the door that we're looking for, but. I'll tell you for now that that one over there is jammed, so this is the only way to go. A mummy. Not my mummy. A hole in the ceiling. And, uh, whoops, mouse escaped the window there. Um, maybe I should keep the mouse in the window. I think I did turn that off uh, so that I could uh, look at my recording tools. Uh, oh, and I want to collect this, one of my favourite collectibles, because there's a, come here, turn around, there we go, has an embossment of a thing that looks a bit like a cat on it. Right, now we have a couple of things that we can do here, we can translate this journal, but we're going to leave it. Um, what we really want in here is to go through this locked door. We could try to pick it, pick it sorry, but we need some picks first. Now, there's only one other way to go then, and that's up through this hole, but we can't get there. So, let's uh, get something to stand on. And he's not happy with us. Um, this, by the way, is something that I've just changed. This physics on these things is a bit buggy at times, or at least it isn't for me, but it has been for at least one uh, player. So I've changed how these things work uh, quite considerably. Now they just sort of go where you put them, and there's no physics involved. So hopefully they should be rather more stable now. Anyway, let's fight this fellow. Die. Who doesn't like us. The trick about the mummies here is that they can't really block you properly. So as long as you don't let them hit you, and as long as you keep your stamina up, you're fine. I can, oh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. It wasn't blocking properly. I'm wondering if I can get him to do a particular move before I defeat him. No, not that. Come on. No, not that either. No, not that either. Come on, you, you know you want to do it. That. You can shove us, draining some of our stamina and uh, disrupting our movement. We can, of course, dodge back out of the way. That's that. A relatively easy for um, early game enemy. Right, him out of the way. We can go about stacking things. We need one more, I believe. Right. Oh, another thing that's been introduced, uh, I think of as I go back and forth like this, uh, since this demo was released, is running now have two speeds, one slightly slower than this and one noticeably, I hope noticeably, faster than this. So you can cover ground a little more easily and you can jump different distances. Anyway, this is what we're here for, these metal strips. Can't do anything with that. 
that's one of the uh, doors that we couldn't get through up in the top level. Right, now that we have those metal strips, we can pick locks. This, this works, oops, what just happened? Don't know quite what happened there. Uh, the way this works is we're actually feeling around inside the lock. It's a little difficult to represent on, on screen, but we're looking for, as shown here, the smallest indentation in the lock. Now, I believe I stumbled on it immediately there. You can see I'm sort of hitting at the walls there. There we go. That's an easy lock. Of course, there'll be other more complicated locks uh, to deal with. Mm, tempting to t translate that because I do like that one. It's a poem, a love poem between this mummy and the other one. Um, there is a rather darker tale as to what's going on here. Uh, right, now we have two ways that we can go from here. We can either open up those loose tiles. Oh, just to show you, we can't go through here and there's a reason that this sarcophagus is empty. And this door's locked and there's something in the lock. This door's also locked, but as noted here, we can see that there's a key that we could perhaps push out if we had something small and narrow. Uh, we could... sword won't fit and our protagonist isn't willing to risk damaging it anyway. These things are too soft. So, we need another tool. Now, I think I'm going to go this way. I actually like that way more, but... I think I'm going to go this way anyway, rather than show off how to solve the puzzle of getting through there. Ah, there we go. Keys down, now we can pick the lock. Let's see... No... These locks are also randomly generated, so you can't memorize ah, a given lock. Here's the key that we pushed out. And by the way, if we had come around the other way, uh, we will see where we're about to go and uh, what I mean by come around the other way. Um, if we had come around the other way, we could have used that key to unlock the door and exit instead. If we open this curtain, move this chest out of the way, there's an opening here, and some bits of rock that we can traverse. Now, there's no obvious way forward. I mean, yes, you can go through there, but trust me that there's no way forward there. What you have to do is take a bit of a guess and climb up there. As you can see, that's where that comes in from over there. It's a bit of a dead end. But from up here, climb to there, up here, uh, in fact I think, can I, oh. oh, there we go, this is it, this is the, the tomb I'm, yeah. the tomb that I'm looking for, I may not be able to read the letters, but this matches the symbols that the archive showed me, letter for letter, um, we're in a, uh, viewing it at an awkward angle there, so you'll have to take our protagonist's word for it, another mummy, I'm sure he'll give us no trouble at all, but nothing, uh, nothing visible here. This is the right place. Hmm. 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 This curtain looks a little suspicious. And here, here it is—the book that I'm looking for. Oh dear. Nope. I'm afraid he's not listening to reason. By the way, we can examine enemies to get perhaps uh, some information about them. Not much in this case, but in some cases you'll get hints as to how to deal with enemies, I hope. This mummy is much like the first, but a slightly more effective opponent. Or at least I hope so. I do have a tendency to dodge back. It's a bad ha well, it's a habit that I ah, got into. I suppose because there are some attacks that... There we go. Some attacks that can't be blocked. So I've gotten into the habit of dodging back from those and just keep dodging back. But unfortunately, it means that you don't have an opportunity to make a counter-attack. You could have let me go. You could have let me go with just one book. There we go. If you just 
just step off an edge, you don't keep your momentum, which is useful for just dropping down small ledges. Some notes. That would have given us some lore if we had... Uh, Ah, right, let's uh, operate the key here. This is the other side of that empty sarcophagus room. But yes, those notes would have given us some lore if we had examined a few other things to be found in this tomb. In fact, there's another lore item that we could have gathered here. Uh, are any of the lore items here? No, I'll show lore items in the next level. Also, cat coin. I like my cat coin. I don't mean to sound immodest in that, I just happen to be fond of that particular one. Anyway, out we go. Oops, a little bit of a chug there. And off. Returning with my prize, I was given my pay. The archives book had no more information on Catal, but they could tell me where it came from. Tenereth. Tenereth is a city above a city. The mound on which it stands is the barrow of its former self. In the rooms below, adventurers seek for artifacts and books, and it is here that, that the archive's book came from. I know the name of the adventurer who brought it, and the location of his claim. Now, just to find him. Ah, there we are. Chapter 2, A Light in the Dark. And the third level, second if you don't count the prologue, and the final one of the demo. You can look out at... Oh, frame rate is chugging a bit start here. But yes, we can look out a little at Tenereth. But... Oh, what is going on with my frame rate? Admittedly, recording's probably not helping. But still. Uh, anyway, this is where we want to go. Ah, a light, unsteady like a lantern or torch. That's our direction for this level. Ah. And this is the undercity of Tenereth, Tenereth of old. Specifically, uh, one of the lower districts of Tenereth. Plant up this rubble pile, and uh, you know what? I'm going to click this law. Bones in the dark. Not one of the happier pieces of law, but uh, I'm quite fond of it myself. Anyway, in here, interesting animal sign. There are a number of things to uh, to see in Tenereth of old here. Yeah? Some are fairly straightforward and uh, uninteractive. Some are a little more interesting, I hope. And uh, we'll, well, we'll see a couple of them while we're here. This level is very much a traversal heavy level. It's... Uh, Right, this is a bit of a tricky jump, so let me concentrate. I want to get this thing below me in case I mess up the jump. Whoops. There we go. That's something that running will help uh, help with, I think. Oops. Frame rate is chugging a little bit occasionally. But I am recording sound and audio, plus my voice uh, separately. Oh, this is another of my... Uh, favorite pieces of lore. A page with letters on it. The hand looks unsteady. Someone's still learning. Children's drawings. <laughs> I remember drawing like that when I was little. There are letters here too. Odd for such a poor region of the city. Here's our new lore entry, which is in short about um, a teacher from one of the higher districts teaching her children uh, their letters and I think their numbers as well. 
and uh, whoops, and the effects that that had on their lives. And well, it's basically a slice of life and an importance of literacy story. There's that light again. Uh, which way shall we go? There are a couple of ways that we can go forward from here. We can go up across there, down the, that ruin to a building that we can't quite see there, across there, through that building that you can just about see there. There's a less obvious way through this building here. And am I forgetting a way? Uh, oh yes, and that building that you can't see there, we can actually go through that as well. Um, let's see. I think, we'll, I think I know which one I'm going to take. Uh, I think let's take the safe route here. Go through this building, onto here, onto here. Up here. Now we can't quite get from that wall to that. So we want, whoops, this broken chair. Just to give us a little bit more height. Right. We're in here. There's some stuff to see down there, but we're not going to go there this time. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes. Now we can go across there and through that little building there. There's a hole in the wall. Instead, let's go this way. And down here. And down here. Past the toilet and the cistern. And we're out. I mean, I say out, we're still in Tenereth, uh, but we are out of that section of the, uh, that section of Tenereth of old. Now there appears to be no way forward, save for these, these gaps. If we examine this, I think there's a hole behind this. If I can just move it aside, I can get through. So, let's do that. Ah, much better. Hmm, tempting to go for the law in this part of the uh, city, but no. No, I think I'll get the collectible here instead. Ah. This is on the route. The collectible's on the route uh, through anyway. There's only really one route through this. Yeah, there we go. Little figurine. And that is further down. There we go. A little wooden figurine. It looks like a brush hunter. Quite well carved. Some more drawings. Up we go. Eee. And drop down here. Ah. Carryable ladder. This is arguably a little bit of a game breaker, so carryable ladders aren't going to be uh, particularly common. Uh, but I do plan on having one in the next level, I think, albeit with some caveats and some... What's the word that I'm looking for? Some nuances. Anyway, since it's a bit of a game breaker... Oh dear, what is that? The ladder fell. Oh dear, what a pity. I like this guy. Nothing left in there. A spirit sign here. There's reason that's auto-saving, because this is sometimes a slightly tricky bit of traversal. Hook onto the ladder, up to here. Now, we want to get over to there. Come on, there we go. I was a little bit afraid that I had jumped short, but nope, I made it. Through here. 
look at this guard log. Doesn't give law, but it's a little bit of what's it? Flavor is the word that I'm looking for. Hmm. Well, we're here, pick up a hammer and a plank and some nails. You'll see now why I'm doing that. I should perhaps have shown that first, but oh well, so it goes. Specifically, we want to get to there. And we can't right now. But a wooden plank. I could use this to get up to the walls if I could just make it longer. If, you know, I had a plank and maybe some way of fixing the plank to this plank. Something like this. Aha, there. I should be able to reach the wall now. We Look, I like my traversal, my jumping. Hmm, there's scratches here, as though something was moved here. Those scratches. Perhaps there's something behind the set of shelves. Indeed there is. Aha. A lantern. This was the light I saw earlier. And... An adventurer, presumably the holder of this claim. He's the one I came to talk to. Time to leave this claim then. I don't. I thought. I think I pressed the action button a couple of times. Hence the I don't. Uh, that doesn't work or whatever my message is there. Right. So now time to leave. Can't get over that without this. I hope I'm not being immodest when I say that uh, I like my traversal. Uh, what I mean is that I, I genuinely have fun with it. Except when it does things like that, which of course it does as soon as I say something like that. There we go, we're up. <sighs> anyway, the point is that I find it fun. Uh, I don't know whether anyone else will find it fun, I hope so of course. But uh, I enjoy it. And yeah, the uh, route out is fairly straightforward. There's not a lot to be discussed here, I think. Uh, not this one, but the next one. And of course there are things to see in Tenrith that I haven't gone past. There's something in a corner over that direction, uh, that direction that is. example, and some graffiti, and things like that. At least one collectible um, that I haven't uh, picked up, and at l two pieces of lore, at least, that I haven't picked up. Yeah, I think two. But you know what, let's go through this one. Um, nah, let's not. Let's go, just go back this way, I think. And just for the fun of it, let's climb up here. Because why not? I mean, it served no actual purpose, but it was fun. And we go up here. Up here. Onto here. Across here. Ah, there's the exit. Now don't want to actually fall into there because there is in fact no escape from that little alley if I'm not much mistaken that's uh, something that I want to fix uh, it is as far as I'm aware the only part of this level that is inescapable you should be able to get out of any other little alley or nook unless there's some tiny corner that I've missed somewhere now to get up there again is the tricky thing 
Sometimes to go up, you have to go down. Specifically because there are chairs down there. I'm sure the, uh, the presence of broken chairs that can be picked up and carried is applicable in many parts of one's life. Oops. There we go. Oh, no, no. Ah, kittens. Climb back up. Let's try that again with slightly less falling through. Well, not falling through, falling down. So we're back up on this level, and we want to get up there. So, retreat the chairs. And, uh, yes, we're about to say goodbye to Tenerith. Well, to this part of Tenerith. Uh, say goodbye to it for the uh, purposes of the demo, at least. Since we're about to finish the demo, uh, the next level does in fact take place in Tenerith, or will once it's, once it's been made, so I intend. Anyway, let us exit. How exciting. These are the first steps in a journey. The path will take your adventurer to one of the lost dead, through a desolate, dangerous city, into a king's tomb, and more besides. On the way, she will be opposed. She will be, she will be opposed by foes living, dead, and stranger still. Join her on her way. Follow the adventure's call and discover whether there truly is a door to the mists. Here ends the demo. Thank you very much for joining me on this little let's play of my own game. Uh, it's a slightly unconventional thing, I suspect. Maybe not actually. Come to think of this in quite a few streams. So, all right, uh, not an unconventional thing, but. Uh, somewhat strange for me at least to be let's play my own game. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Stay well and goodbye.